before it starts giving us eggs, mm. it takes uh, 18 weeks. 18 weeks. Yes. Or 18 weeks before. That's about four and a half months. Four and a half months. Yeah. Pe people will say four and a half to five months. But by four and a half months, we, we start seeing one egg, two eggs. At 20 months, huh? I can let it go. Yeah. Where am I taking it? They are sold as X layers. Remember, these are chicken which are laying. There are some people even who will take them and put them in the houses just to lay a few eggs maybe. But majority of them go to get them into meat. If you decide to go into broiler, let me tell you, as a farmer, it's a good business. But if you are going to that business, you must first of all know where will I take these broilers. Because immediately you are not able to answer that question. That I don't know where I will take them. Forget it. Can layers and broilers mm. coexist? Can I have a room where I can put layers and broilers together? No, it ah. can't happen. No, it doesn't happen. Why? Because they will kill each other. Well, actually, you can't keep the two together. Let me just say, you can't put the two together. Mm. Chicken, the hidden truth is one. There is a time you can wake up and find they are dying, like Nikutumo Ametumo Akufe too. That's a bad thing. I think that's why I love the caged chicken, because if one gets sick, you can be able to, to remove identify it. it, remove it, isolate it, find out what would be the problem, so that you can start the others on yes. treatment. It's not like the deep preter. So trust the process. One day your life is gonna change. Keep on believing. You will be better than before. So trust the process. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of Inspire Global. My name is Lynn Googie and I hope you guys you are having an amazing, amazing year. Now, let me ask you an honest question. How are you feeling our agribusiness uh, shows? I'm loving the feedback from all the shows that we've done. And today I'm back at this beautiful place where I met this incredible woman. The last time we were together, we were talking about dairy farming. But today I said, you know what? I've also been asking asking myself a question on layers and broilers. What exactly are layers and what exactly are broilers? How do we even keep this uh, chicken? Where are the profits at? Where is the market at? And I remembered last time I was here, I saw mom keeping thousands of chickens. And today I said, let me just come so that we are able to learn together on broilers and layers. Na niko karibu kuacha atueleze so that she can give us a bit of tips here and there but I have to say thank you so much to the incredible partners what wangwa optiven I see you are celebrating now see 24 years of positive transformation it's 25 years of positive transformation you guys are coming through so kama unatafuta pia shamba and unaweza weka chicken zako sangine shamba siyo tu kujenga sangine you gotta go and do buyani ufanye tutu shugli hapa na pale hapo inje why don't you check my people at Optiven and they have beautiful properties for you. Their number iko hapa kwa screen na kuambia asante. 800k subscribers ndio sisi yao and I hope today we learn. You know what we say on Inspire Global there is no shame in hard work. Whatever you do, do it diligently and I hope you get a couple of business tips uh, from today's show. So mom, how are you? I'm fine, Happy thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Rin. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm blessed. How was the end of the year? Uh, very tight, I have to say. Uh, it was a bit tight, but I'm gracious. Uh. It was, I'm really grateful. Okay, the beginning was better? Oh, beautiful. I thank love you. January's, do okay. you? <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> but this weather is complicated. Yes. It rains, it's hot, it's hot when it's raining. It's mm. just complicated. Yes. But nice to see you again. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for giving me another opportunity. You're most welcome. I appreciate it. Eh? So, ma'am, I'm back here. How is, how is business? Uh, business, how do I say about business? Mm. Business is business. Yes. Kawaida, is, it has got ups and downs. Mm -hmm. There are times it's at its best, times it's at rest. Uh, I would say... 
we have added year 23. Yes. But the end of the year does not mean things things just flip and change. Yeah. So things have not changed. Business is not uh, it's still tough. Mm -hmm. But what do we say? We shall say, even when it's tough, the tough will continue moving. Yes. Yes, yes. Would you still advise a lot of people to go into farming from your experience? From my experience, I would say farming uh, our agribusiness is still the way to go yes. in this country because, uh, like we have always been told and we have always known, agriculture is the backbone of this country. Mm -hmm. And even when everything is not doable or every, we cannot do anything else, we'll have to eat at the end of the day. Even when we are at our worst, we'll have to eat at the end of the day. Yes. So somebody has to come up with the food. Mm -hmm. And that can only be done through agriculture. Okay. So I would say, still say, at the end of everything, mm -hmm. that uh, even people who have opened, I keep on, I give uh, examples of like boutiques and hotels and every other place, you, the business you are thinking about, there is only one business that somebody will not go to mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the market for food. You have to go there. You have to okay. go to the market. Biashara, yeah, so, yeah. You gotta pass yeah. by the market. You go, yeah. At okay. the end of it, we'll have need to, uh, to take food in the evening. Even mm -hmm. if it's one meal a, a day, somebody has to look for that food. And that food has to come from the farm yes. in this country. So it's still the way to go. Mm -hmm. And we believe and uh, we are hopeful and have to think that everything will turn around to the best. Good. Yeah. I love the positivity. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. And I have to say, just being back here gives me a lot of good energy. Mm -hmm. The last time I sat with you, the conversation was well received by our audience. True. And I hope people also reached out here and there. But before Atta Twende Mbali, Mom, let me ask you, last time we, we, we covered more on the cows, but now why chicken for you as a, a businesswoman? Uh, Lynn, what I would say is a uh, good question, why chicken? But uh, if uh, I can go a little bit back, chicken were before the cows. Yes. Because initially we had chicken, but uh, kienyeji, mm -hmm. what you call kienyeji chicken. Yeah. And uh, then when we started the cows, the cows were on the ground floor. We had two floors. The cows were on the ground floor, chicken were on the top floor, uh -huh. on, the, on the first floor, yeah. because of space. Yeah. So, you know, down here, you have to get a title deed. And everybody will accuse you for trespassing if you get into their land, isn't it? Yes. But as far as you can manage to go up, there's no title deed you need to go up. So you are free to go up to the outdoor, I don't know what, mm. added floors up, but no title deed expected of you, nor it's there only when you're on the ground. Mm -hmm. So what we did is that our space was small, so we did the cows on the ground floor. Then on top of the, the cows, they were chicken. Yeah. So we had put chicken there, Kenyeji initially. Then from Kenyeji, we went to what was called improved Kenyeji from curry. Mm -hmm. Then from there is when we came to chicken, which is now we are talking about the layers, the caged uh, layers. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially we had layers which were the deep litter and with their a bit of disadvantages but when the cages come in we came in we thought it was a better option and uh, the first cage what we had was a 500 birds cage so we continued with our with our deep litter but then we have the cage yes so at the what end of a deep litter mom deep litter is when you put the the chicken on the ground scattered all over yes. with no restrictions so they you put all the food is there the water is there and uh, the chicken are there and they're the scattered all, yeah the kenya you just mm -hmm. put them there mm -hmm. so then uh, when we put the 500 uh, we thought they were better than the deep litter because we noticed one thing you control the diseases mm -hmm. better the feeding is more efficient the loss on feeding is less because of the scattering of, you know, the cuckoos, the way they keep on doing like, yes, scratching their, their feet on the, on the food. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was that, that would not happen when they're in the cages, the water, they are able to feed automatically with, with, with the nipples without being given water in the cans. Mm -hmm. So in the, with the, the feed, the, the drinkers. So when we put those chicken, the 500, we learned a lot from them. And the only thing we notice is even if you go, even as we are talking today, everybody will tell you, even when you go to buy the cages, they'll tell you one cage holds four. 
but for us, out of our own decision, it might look like a, it is a, a wasted space, but we never put four. We only put three. Mm. Because you'll notice when you put them four, they somehow squeeze. And we didn't like the squeezing. So we went removing the extra one and we had to extend the, uh, the cage. So what we did is after that, as we continued with the cows, we continue now piloting on the, on the cage chickens. So from the 500, we went to 1,000. Then from 1,000, we went to 3,000. Mm -hmm. And that was the year, the COVID year. That is 2020. Yes. Well, that's the first time we put there the, the 3,000. Mm -hmm. So with the 3,000, we thought now with the 3,000, we can't go back once now. We have to, to go on. That time, we have completely moved the, the chicken from on top of the cows. It's empty. Mm -hmm. So we did new blocks for purposes of putting the cages, mm -hmm. the cages in a totally different environment. So our biggest challenge was when, and I, I, I think this is good for farmers to hear, is when you are doing a construction, it's always, I think, good to get an expert and in some of these areas. Because when we did our construction, the first construction we did... Now for the layers. For the layers, mm -hmm. the cage layers, when we went, we, we have 3,000. But when now we went to put the cages, the cages, the ones we had thought we would put the A-shape, could only accommodate 2,400. So where do we take the extra? 600. 600. So it was like, what do you mean? So we kept on consulting until somebody came and told us, no, if you decide to change the cages from the A-shaped, you you, the A-shaped just look like the A yes. or an inverted V, if you, if you remove the, K, the A cages and we put the H cages, it will, they will fit the uh -huh. 3,000. So I said, so what's the magic? And I, that's the first time I came to know that the H, they just look the way the H is. So they, they lie on each other. Uh -huh. The other one, you know, they go like this. So they take more more, more space, space on the ground. They go widening out. So <clears throat> so we, we said, then we give them a tap. And true to it, when we put the, the H cages, they fitted the 3,000. Mm. So rule number one, yeah. get an expert. Get an expert. When you, you decide to do something, it's always respect the professionals yes. because they all you not go through a lot of hassles at the end of the day mm. so we had to make that change to fit the the, the chicken the chicken mm -hmm. so after that i think we kept on going but i think what also made us to to continue increase is is two things uh, okay one is one thing one we we had a lot of interest in chicken from the word go, I told you even when we had the cows, yes. we still had upstairs, we still have the chicken. Number two is during the drought. This drought which was there, there is COVID, there is drought, there, I don't know, all those things. things yeah. Uh, the cows became uh, a big issue because of the feeding. Because like for us in Mevid, we have always had stock for our feeds, for our cows, for a minimum of two years. Okay, that time when the drought came the first year, there was COVID and then the drought, we were okay. Because we were hopeful that the rains are going to come mm -hmm. and our stores will come back. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, fill back our bunkers with the silage, with the, with the hay and all that. What happened? The drought continued. The drought continued. So we had how many years? Two, Two. years of no harvest. Mm. To us, those are four seasons. Yes. So the four seasons with no harvest, with over 100 cows was a nightmare. And um, it reached a place and you are like wondering, okay, the hay is getting off stock. The silage is also finishing, what next? And let me tell you, for the first time, for the first time, I said, I respect the Maasai uh, community. community. Because the next time you see them walking with their cows on the streets and the roads, if you are a farmer, who was, uh, fam who was having daily cows during the two years of drought like we had, you know why they do that. I respect them. Mm. So we, we said, okay, if, with, if we are having this problem with the cows, at this late, if this drought continues for another year, we will close this farm. Okay, but good luck, God, the following year brought rain. Yes. But so we were looking, we also started looking for what else can sustain the farm because you have two things to deal with. Okay, you have the, the infrastructure, mm -hmm. you have costs, which the cows are having, and now you have staff, unless you tell them to, 
park, wide and up. Go. park and go. So we said we cannot tell these young men and women to park off and go. So we need to look for a way of detain their, them detain their jobs. Mm. But remember one time I told, I told, we were in a meeting and I told myself, you know what's happening? At this late, if, we, if, if the drought, conti drought continues like this and Mebed ends up, you know, we all uh, become jobless. Yes. And they said, we are ready to do anything, look for anything else, but not tell us go. Even if it's telling us to go along, along the roads and mm. get uh, anything we can for the cows, but please don't let, let Mebed go down. So we said, okay, what about the chicken? That's the time now we say, let's increase the number of, of chicken. chicken. Because we notice, at least the chicken, you are not going to look for fodder outside. You rely on the, the unga, mm. the, the, the layers match. Mm -hmm. You rely on it. So whether they are greens or not, you are not worried as far as you can get the, the match. Yes. Now, the only problem now is the, the prices. So the ma profit margin is not high because now, what you knew uh, uh, as a bag of uh, layers of 70 kilos, you are buying it at 2,000, sometimes even 1850. So you, you find now even what you are getting is, is not something you can really count on to sustain the farm. But you, is you are better off than making a loss. You are not making a loss, but you are, you are breaking even. Mm. So we thought this is a venture we can get into. So from the 3,000, the next question is, when these 3,000 exit, mm -hmm. what will happen? Because that's the, 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 the issue with chicken farmers or layers farmers, for example. Because when, it's just like milk. When this meal, you start milking this cow, and then it, when it finishes milking the cow, what will happen mm. to your customers? Okay. So that's what makes the, the chicken farmer not have like a one stage of, stage mm. of uh, chicken, just mm -hmm. like for the cows. Yeah. Because now I'm talking about 3,000. Okay, I start harvesting the eggs. Okay, so these are for the layers. For the layers. Mm. So samama pani peleke pole pole. Number one, layers are designed for laying mm. eggs. For laying eggs. Yes. Just eggs. Yes. How long? Mm -hmm. So you've you've gotten them. Mm -hmm. How long will they start uh, mm -hmm. giving you eggs? The the average period is about 18 to 24 months. Uh -huh. Like the ones we are having, depending on the type of birds you are having. The type we are having, which is called hyrine, is for 24 months. You so it, 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 we, it will produce eggs for 24 months. Or it yes. will produce eggs for 24 months. Yes. But how long before mm. it starts giving you the Before eggs? it starts giving us eggs, mm. it takes uh, 18 weeks. 18 weeks. Yes. Or 18 weeks before. That's about four and a half months. Four and a half months. Yeah. Pe people will say four and a half to five months. But by four and a half months, we, we start seeing one egg, two eggs. Okay. So when it, it it gets to the peak, that's something else. But we have a program where we check. So what we do is that you target that by the, the time that uh, the bird is hitting seven months, eight months, you're able to break off. Any, mm. any, yeah, okay. Any, yeah. So you have to keep them fast for mm. almost five months mm -hmm. before they can start generating anything for you. Uh, let me not try to you that I'm very good at, at, at keeping them to at uh, <laughs> the one day old. The one day old is looks like a newborn. Yes. I, 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 the one day old, I k we kept only ones. The first 3,000 and the previous one, we are keeping the one day old. But uh, I didn't like the work. Ah, I, I, to be sincere, I didn't. You know, you sweep out, monitoring them like small babies in the newborn unit. So what we did is in the process of trying to find out now, how can we get out of this uh, issue of being a one day old, mortality is high, you have so many hours uh, monitoring them, how can we get out of this? Uh -huh. So what we did is uh, in the process of searching for a solution, <coughs> we got a friend who told us, why do you have to go through this? There's somebody who can, who has mastered the game, keep for you the chick, from one day on, and she, he will only bring them at age 16 weeks. Ah. That time they have received they, mm, received all their vaccinations. Yes. They have been debunked. You know, everything has been done for you. So you're only left with coming to continue with the few vaccines, which are, are the, when they arrive, that is a 16 week. There is a 16 week vaccination we give. Then after the 16, there is a 35 week. Uh -huh. Then after that five, there is a 50. So those are only three vaccinations until they, they, yes. they, they, they exit. Uh -huh. So that was okay. Yeah. So we said that is a better choice. So work smart. Work smart. Uh. So we only receive them 
at 16 weeks. Like as I'm talking to you, we are going to receive a lot on 21st, on okay. 28th, 21st, at 16 weeks. All right. The guy does a good job, so oh. we have left it to him to do it. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. So you receive them at that mature stage. Yes. And then now you start collecting your eggs after a couple after, of weeks. After a couple of weeks now. In fact, after about within the next four weeks, you start, you'll have changed from growers because when they come, they're feeding on growers. Mm. Then within about two, what three are weeks, growers, ma'am? Growers is the, the feed which are given to these ones before they start laying. Okay. When they start laying, we give them layers much. Oh, yes. beautiful. Yes. How expensive or cheap mm. is their food, the feed? You know, expensive is relative. Eh. It depends on where you are buying uh -huh. and uh, what you are buying. Uh -huh. But I would say it's not cheap. Because I've told you, currently, nothing seems to be cheap in this country. Like everybody is singing the song, the cost of living mm. is across the board. Mm -hmm. So initially, when we were putting chicken, you, that's why I was saying, you would even get a bag of uh, 70 kg of uh, rare as much at, uh, let's say, 70 kgs at 2700. Today, I get it at 4,000. So that is the differentials. So, but I, I always say it's business. Yes. And in trading, unfortunately, that's why people are complaining about the high standards of breathing is because at that time, the egg, you come to a shop and you get a sh uh, an egg at 10 bob. Yes. Today, how much is an egg? 20 bob. 20 bob. So, because somebody has to, to carry the burden. So, when I buy the feeds at the heart, that, uh, that high mm. price, then what, who, where do I pass the cost? To the consumer. To the consumer. Yeah, and that's why people complain. So, they'll say the eggs have become very expensive. But on the other side, mm. the people who are doing the rearing of the, of the, of the, bird, the chicken are saying the feeds have become expensive. very expensive. So, it's a chain. So, until it is stopped some, it, it is stopped somewhere, then all the rest will come. Down. Yes. Yes. Good. So that's it. There it is. Ah, I love that. My people, we are understanding. Now I've understood <laughs> the feeding. Mm. I've understood the timelines, yeah. the months. Yeah. Now, if I get one, mm. it will start giving me eggs at five, five months, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How many eggs mm -hmm. in a day? Every chicken gives only one egg, egg in, in a day. Hours. Guaranteed. Yes. Guaranteed. Yes. So you get all your eggs from your layers. Every every I layer, do. every chicken has to give you an at egg. The, at the at the peak, mm. we have so far been able to attain the maximum we have ever gone was ninety six point eight percent. That is telling is only about two point two who are not trained. Mm. And usually we say most likely they were not trained. Maybe new, uh, they are the ones instead of laying on within the twenty four hours mm. margin, it read maybe the 24.5, and you see it has been skipped off yes. from that name. So that's how we have been able to, to, to go as far as egg production is. So if you are able, like now, like now when we have, you remember I said about putting them in rots. Yes. When I was asking you, if today you have 3,000, then you, they, they leave the farm. What will you tell your farmers? You have no more eggs. You are waiting for eggs to come from where? So what we do is that you put chicken layers chicken in stages in this way you have your minimum three so there is no time you'll have below what you have always produced in this way if i have put to three thousand in, uh, in in let's say march mm -hmm. because with us we separate them with six months then the six, next six months i'll put another three thousand so when these ones you'll be getting out these ones will be still Lane. lane sour then i bring a third one so that when this the first lot goes it is being replaced immediately mm. so it goes like a continuous cycle it's, it's a non-stopping cycle non stopping yes i love that so at five months it starts giving me the eggs mm. at 20 months i can let it go yeah. where am i taking it let me not say at 20 months mm. because if I, t I say at 20 months i'll i'll i'll, I'll be misreading some of the people yes. who might say, no, 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 mine I dispose at 24 months. Okay. Because one, it depends on how you are taking care of your birds. Okay. The type of your birds also matters. There are birds which cannot maybe hit the 20, 24 months of laying. But what I always tell the farmers when you are dealing with uh, agribusiness, remember, this is not uh, farming kawaida. This is farming as a business. Okay. So you are looking for a profit. 
let it not be no profit at all. Even if it's a little profit, like what we are saying currently, business, we are just looking for something to sustain you with a little profit so that you can keep on having the, employ mm -hmm. the employed personnel paid mm -hmm. and everything else going on. So what you do is on a daily basis, you should do an assessment and monitoring of the production of the eggs you are getting every day. By that time, you already know what is your margin, the, the, mm. the margin you expect. Mm -hmm. So like for Mebed, what we do is uh, we have a calculation like almost every other day. Okay, today the, the feeds taken are this number, are uh, these kilos, and uh, employer's uh, money is this, this, and the chicken produced this, each lot, okay? If a lot, me, uh, a lot like say lot A hits a certain percentage, we know that percentage we are only saying we are only breaking even. So if it goes below there, even with one percent, it means now we are digging back into our pockets to feed it. Mm. That's the time we say let's go. Yes. Yes. So, so we keep on doing that mm. those mathematics, and and literally we do them like every uh, every every often. Mm. At least even if not every day, once a week we sit down because you see the prices of things are changing on a daily yes. basis. This is what we have spent. This is the fees they are, uh, the way they are costing this. This is the eggs, the percentage they have produced. With this percentage, if we keep this the chicken on, uh, hanging on them, they are going to start eating. Okay. Somebody else's Somebody money. Somebody else's money. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So letting them go means putting now them out of the market as meat. Now in letting them go, go is is uh, putting them out in the market. They are sold as ex layers. Remember, these are chicken which are laying. There are some people even who will take them and put them in the houses just to lay a few eggs, maybe. But majority of them go to get them into meat because uh -huh. if you are having a ch chicks which are, are laying about. Uh, 35 45 percent but economically or businesses they are not make that that doesn't that figure is not mm. making sense so you let them go mm. but then uh, somebody else will say if i keep them for a few days before i slaughter them i'll get about five trays of eggs yes every day good well that will that okay. works for you that works it. for them yeah. all right mm. so layers can give you eggs and meat yes at the same time yes beautiful yeah. let's come to broilers mm -hmm. Do you, you you keep broilers? Yes, I, we do keep broilers. Take us through what are broilers, ma'am. Leo na ulizia watu izi maswali zote za werevu. Broilers are the birds we keep or the chicken we keep mm. for meat only. Okay, for meat only. They don't lay eggs. They are very easy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so a broiler can never give you an egg. <laughs> they are just too lazy. They have too, they, they have too, they gain too much weight. And so that even, uh, even walking around is a big problem. Uh -huh. they, I call them the obese people. Wow. They, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. they are not like the, the layers. So yeah, the broilers, yeah, we keep them, but we don't keep a lot. We only keep, um, three lots mm -hmm. of 500, 500, 500. The, pu the purpose of the chicken is uh, to get meat from them. Mm. Yes. Just meat. Just meat. I hear they eat a lot. They eat. They eat. Uh, they eat uh, a lot. Their, their feeds are, are totally different. They don't uh, take clear as much like the others. Yes. They, they take a different type of food uh, in pellet form or in uh, stew mash, but not layers. But their feed is now calculated to once that weight gain because the purpose of that food is to make them gain weight faster so that they can exit uh, for meat faster. Uh -huh. For us, we keep them for between 35 to 42 days. Mm -hmm. Then we dispose them. And uh, why we keep them, many people wonder why should you keep it for that long? Is because the 500 for each group, uh, for, or, or, or for the, the three groups, the rods, we keep them for our grills. You, oh, you remember, you remember last time when you were here, yes. you passed through our grill. Yes. So the chicken we have in our grills are uh, actually in, on the farm. So we keep them for only that purpose. So, And why we are keeping them to be a little bit, bit bigger is because we don't want to, to sell people. You know, we are in the rural. Yes. And rural people, and even now the Nairobi people, of course, I know you people also like things which are big. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when you slaughter the 1.2, 1.3, 
and uh, start serving them in our grill. We've had people complaining that, hey, this is too small. This is too small. So he said, since we are in the farm mm. and uh, we are in the rural, let's not be like the Nairobi people. Let Nairobi people be the Nairobi people, or the city people, the mean the city people. Our main customers and our focus is also the rural community, and we want to give them what we will also appreciate mm. and feel that uh, we have not stolen their money in the name of selling them food. So what we do is we leave them a little bit longer to get to 1.6 kilos. So when they get at 1.6 kilos is when now we slaughter them okay. for, for, for feeding. For feeding. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting a couple of differences here. For layers, mm. there is a lot of medication, the immunization, you know, the vaccines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For broilers, mm -hmm. do you vaccinate them? Yeah, broilers are also vaccinated. Mm. The only thing that is that their vaccinations are not many because they also have a very short period yes. of life so they have um, they have only six weeks so by the end by within those weeks the vaccinations are very few and many our our our, our vaccinations is guboro and newcastle mm -hmm. and then once we are done with that then they are good to go because the first vaccination they get when they are coming from the hashari yes so once we are done with that we are good to go nothing like uh, multivitamins or supplementation mm. because i did i uh with the the rares as they go they get aged with the time you find that the because of that rain every day, every day. I think they are just, they are, they are like an, a human being mm -hmm. because they get uh, some of their um, uh, calcium depleted. So you find you'll have to supplement the calcium maybe as they yes. age off because now the egg, the eggshell starts becoming weak. So it's the eggshell which is touched a little bit In and a it's ambasuka head a little bit and it's just cracks mm. off so for you to sustain the quality of the shell you find that because of that high production then you have to to give them calcium at a certain level mm. just to substitute and i think it's just like the way we do even for the cows the cows remember there is they have to be taken through chumvi yes yeah the minerals they are given so they are given also uh, uh, things like vitamins, mm -hmm. just to supplement for their health. Just the way we do in a human in human beings, that it reaches a stage where, at a certain age, you hear people saying, "I'm taking calcium supplements or I'm taking iron supplements," something like that. So for chicken, we 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 had uh, what drives us to give them is mainly the quality of the shell. Okay. Of the egg. Yeah. The quality of the shell. Yeah. I love that. Discover a homely haven at Ocean View Ridge in Vipingo by Optivin. Visualize your dream coastal home. Call us today on 0790-300-300. Can layers and broilers mm. coexist? Can I have a room where I can put layers and broilers together? No, it can't ah. happen. No, it doesn't happen. Why? Because they will kill each other. They will peck You see, the, the, nini, the, <laughs> the, 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 the layers, I've told you, they are, they are females. So they are actively and uh, they are busy for production. The broilers, are, you see them, they are ever tired. <laughs> <laughs> and lazy. And lazy. Uh -huh. So actually, you can't keep the two together. Let me just say, you can't put the two together. Mm. You they can't. can't coexist. They can't co. I don't think they can coexist. It's not like the Kienyeji chicken where the jogos and, and the, the, mm. eh, the, the chicken. Mm -mm, these ones, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can't coexist. I don't think they can. Okay, mm. is this where because I see you already have a ready market mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. your broilers? Mm -hmm. For someone who is looking into investing in broilers, mm -hmm. is a cold room something mm -hmm. they need to start thinking about? Mm -hmm. And I think Nimekua is a very professional kwa agribusiness. <coughs> if you could tell them what's a cold room and why it's important, especially when you are doing broilers. Mm -hmm. Uh, a cold room, I know you have heard about it in mm. Mevel because the last time we were here, you, you, we talked about the cold room. And, um, and <laughs> I think I need school fees. Ah, <laughs> mom, I'm your daughter. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, just like we have a cold room for storage of milk, mm. we have a cold room for storage of our chicken meat. It's not every farmer who will need a, a cold room. Yes. Because a farmer, when you, if you decide to go into broiler, let me tell you, as a farmer, it's a good business. Those who do it, they say it's a very good business. Mm. I'm not sure because I've not done it, the selling of broiler. But if you are going to that business, you must first of all know where will I take these broilers. Once they hit, if we are supposed to sell them at 30 days, 
uh, 35 days. Once wow. they hit 35 days and they have attained the kilos you need or the weight you need them to attain, then where are you going to take them? Because immediately you are not able to answer that question that I don't know where I will take them. Forget it. Because when they hit that five, that, that five days, if that's your calculation, it means when you start feeding them the following day, the that sixth day, they're eating somebody's pocket. Yes. Any production, whether it is chicken, whether it is milk, whether, whatever you decide to do as a business, always know where is the market. Okay? If you don't know where the market is, take a break or take a pause and sit back. So for the broiler, why we have a cold room is because you remember I told you our broilers all go to our grills. Yes. Okay? Now what happens is that our grills cannot consume 500 one day. Okay? And I told you we put five lots of 500 each uh, lot. Eh? Yes. So if we have 500, we are slaughtering today. Okay? And we know our grills cannot take 500 on a day. Now, where am I going to put all the rest? It is either I don't slaughter them, I keep them alive until they finish. So I keep on slaughtering 10, 20, 10, 20. So I, I, it might take me three weeks to finish them, okay? So that means who is feeding them? Where are they getting the food to feed? By the time you feed them, by the way, those I'm telling you, they are lazy. And because they are overweight, the, because of that growth of theirs, I think their hearts are too small. Mm. Once they pass the, the duration they are supposed to exist, they start dying natural death. Like uh, they are getting just cardiac arrest. <laughs> they just tap, tap. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm serious. For real, for real. For real. Okay. You just fight them like this. Uh. They're just creeping and they, they are dead. Anyway, so what we do is that when they hit their, well, the 35 or 42 days we expect them to have, because they, there are some which we want at 1.4 kgs, and there are some we went at 1.6 kgs. So there are some which we, prog mm. we, we extend another one week. Mm -hmm. So when we reach, reach that, that age, we slaughter them together all of them okay remember they are for the grill yes. and we have said the grill cannot take all of them so when we sort all of them we put them in the cold room you see in the cold room they can only eat the electricity yeah they can yeah they will consume the electricity but at least they are not eating the feeds yes. and there is no stuff there to keep on monitoring them there are no drugs there to be given less losses Less losses. So I'd rather now pay the bill for keeping them in the cold room mm. rather than feeding them for another three weeks. Okay. Yeah. Hey, oh, I love that. So know the market. Know your market. Would you recommend someone first researches on the market before they put the broilers? Not only the not only for the chicken. For anything. Any business you are, you aim to start. First of all, do a feasibility study uh -huh. of where is my market. market. Yes. Any business you want to start, uh -huh. even if you want to go and get, uh, like uh, the young ladies want to, a lot of shoes, eh? no. <laughs> where are you going to put the shoes? Yes. And which type of shoe are you going to bring? Uh -huh. Because you might bring it there and nobody buys it because you didn't do a good study of the market. Yeah, okay. it's always good to know your market. Now, can I ask a question? Mm. So. <laughs> Let me ask this question. Mm. So, broilers or layers, mm. where is the money? Broilers or layers, where is, where the, is the money? Where is the good money at? Nataka tu niweke moja mam. Either broilers or layers. Which one will you tell me, Lin, kufa na iyo, do layers or do broilers? Both of them uh -huh. will give you money or give you losses. Ah. The only thing I keep on telling you, where is your market? market? Let me give you an example. Yes. Why did we start the layers? Okay, because I have told you why we started the, the broilers. Why did we start the layers? We started the layers because we noticed in Mwea, very people, very few people were keeping chicken. Just like very few people were picking, or had, there were no people when keeping cows when we started cows in Mwea. So chicken pier, there were no people keeping chicken. So when we started, we knew our market is not Nairobi. Because for us, we have continued saying, ours is not to develop Nairobi. Nairobi has got so many people to develop it until they are spoiled for Choice. choices. So our, our, our business is not to benefit more of the Nairobi people because they have a lot of choices. It is the rural community, whereby there is like there are things which are only meant for Nairobi, but we have tried to pull that Nairobi into the rural community. Mm -hmm. And I keep on saying thank you to this thing we call devolution. Because it's the one which has brought all this. There is availability of water, there is availability of uh, 
of electricity. So water is in plenty in the rural. We don't have to keep struggling on, on the small pipes to, to drain water. Mm -hmm. You can dig a borehole in your yes. compound and you have, you have plenty of water. Our target population for our eggs is the rural community. And let me tell you, these guys take a lot of eggs. You know, when I grew up as a, a small girl, my mother had those Kenyaji chicken that she could go pick three eggs or four eggs or five eggs, which have been laid for one week maybe, go and sell them in the market to buy a packet of funga. Now, it is totally different in the, with the current generation in the rural. It is somebody is buying eggs, okay? Buying eggs to go and cook as the protein component for the ugari in the journey. So the ugari will have either uh, skumawiki with mayai, mayai. which uh, has been fried with tomatoes. Yes. Now tell me. And they will not buy many. Oh, they will finish a lot of eggs. They take a lot of eggs, but they will go in three, give me four, give me five, give me Mm. Give me a tray. Yes. When you when you, we, when I look at our books and see somebody had bought a tray of eggs here, I know that person did not buy for the household that day. It is somebody who is starting a business. Because what has also happened, we have noticed this young generation. I love them because they are, they are also they are very also entrepreneurial. Mm. Because with lack of jobs, you have to use your brain because it's there for free to be used. <laughs> So, what they are doing, <laughs> yeah, only that some refuse to use it properly. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so, they buy a tray of egg, and okay, if you find them, they're buying a tray. No, that is not, that is not for, for the house, for their houses. Mm -mm, mm -mm. They will buy a tray of eggs, go boil the tray, tengeneza, kashumbari. kashumbari, you'll find them along the road selling an egg, the one you sold at 15. 25. Isn't that beautiful? It's good. 20, 25. Yes. So we say we are also in the in our small way, we are also creating excedent businesses from method. Mm. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Do eggs expire, mom? Yes, if you like <coughs> it also depends on where they are. If you keep them in the fridge, they will last longer. Mm -hmm. But this particular place called Moya with its crazy temperatures, the eggs we always sell, we do not have our eggs exceeding to tomorrow. Mm. Thank God we have adequate market. We never, ha the eggs which will be corrected today, and I think you saw it the last other time, time. Yeah, last time, yeah, yes. yeah. we are correcting about 300 trays every day, 330, but every day those eggs, like now if you go to the store, you'll not be able to get an egg. If you want to eat an egg, you have to go to our shops to get an egg yes. from Method. And uh, the reason why we have kept kept it that we would, we might not unless we create another we get another market to go to another mm. maybe to four hundred traces because eggs here if you keep them even for one week, the second week they start getting mm. spoiled because of the temperatures. Mm. The temperatures here are just crazy. Yes. Yeah. So it depends on the temperature. It depends on the temperatures. Okay. I believe so. And the quality of the egg. Yeah. Yeah. But you would tell anyone chicken farming if people are able to give it a try, they can give it a try. What it's, are it's, the? It's what it's what mm. the it's what the trial. What are the hard truths though? What are some of the hidden truths in that in this sector? Chicken, the hidden truth is one. There is a time you can wake up and find they are dying. Like, nikutumu ametumu akufe tu. That's the bad thing. It's, that's the only thing I have a problem yes. with them. It's not like the cow. For a cow to die, it even you even see it going through mm. sickness. You know, of course, when it dies, you lose a big way. But you know, the chicken are bad. And that's the, I think that's why I love the caged chicken. Because... If one gets sick, you can be able to, to remove identify it. it, remove it, isolate it, find out what would be the problem so that you can start the others on yes. treatment. It's not like the deep reader. But the chicken, if one gets infected, like this disease called Newcastle, in my, in my culture they call it Kihuruto. Mm. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. you, you are done. You are done. You wake up, all the 11,000 are all of sleeping. Dead. Within no time, they are just dying. 
So you lose the whole flock. That's the only bad thing I, I, uh -huh. I, I the only thing I don't like about birds. Uh -huh. The other thing is, uh, but this is now, it's not, a, it's not something uh -huh. which would make somebody not do it because monitoring is your responsibility when you become a farmer, unless you are a partial farmer. Uh, is uh, you might find in the evening you go to collect eggs. Yesterday you collected, let's say you are collecting 100 eggs, uh, trays of eggs. Then tomorrow you go and, today you collect 100. Tomorrow you go to collect eggs and you find you have only 50 trays. The next question, hey, even if they were being stolen, can somebody can steal 50? Mm. Can steal 50? Mm. So you have to find out what could be the problem. Yes. And, and let me tell you, the may, you find it is most, most likely the management of water flow. Because you see, like our, our birds are take uh, water on themselves uh, for themselves from the nipple system. Eh? If that water get blocked, you know the chicken doesn't know how to say I have not taken water. But what what will happen? It will tell you the, through the production of the eggs. So tomorrow you go and find there is no mm. the eggs you are expecting is not what we are going to get. Mm. So you have to keep on checking the systems, especially these battery cages uh, things. You have to keep on checking the water flow and the nipples are producing water mm -hmm. when they, they, they try to knock on them. Then um, the other thing is uh, we, we are having challenges with is the feeds, the quality. So you keep on changing from one, uh, from one supplier to another because you start with a supplier doing a very good job and you sustain for some time. But for whatever reason, because I know they are also having their own challenges mm -hmm. with the raw materials, mm -hmm. then they reduce or they they don't keep the quality of the food to standard. And so what will happen? The eggs. Production. Yeah. And especially for the for the chicken, I would tell the farmers, I would like the farmers to notice one thing. You don't even look for a thousand things in the in the chicken feed. Just look for the for the concentration of the maize grain you can see. Even on your palm like this. Just look, how much of the maize can I see? If you can hardly see a speck of maize granule, or you can only see it after looking like this, ah, that food won't work. Because we are told the, the, the chicken feeds, approximately 60% is maize. Because mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. immediately that goes down. The effect is immediate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Mm. Wow. And you've also reminded me something. What do you do with the waste? Waste management for the chicken mm. all goes to the farms. Ah. All goes to the farms. Uh, we use it as manure. The other thing maybe I can say about the waste is that uh, chicken, like where we are sitting, there are chicken. But you can see, um, yeah, maybe you are spreading chicken. Mm. But uh, you have to. They are. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be, yeah, but you can't actually smell it. Yes, and uh, one of the things is how often are you removing the droppings, the chicken droppings? So like for us, we do it every alternative day. We remove the, for the hedge, we have trays where we pull and scrape off the, mm. of the chicken and take to the farm. And uh, for the A-type, mm. a, a type, we sweep every day. Mm. The other thing we discovered the other day is that uh, to maintain that, uh, uh, high quality of cleanliness and uh, flies and reduce the flies in the chicken house and mm. uh, maggots and whatever, we use lime. Lime? Yeah. No way. We use lime. No. Talking about the powder lime. The powder lime. The farm. You know oh. the one we put in the... Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That is that lime. Uh -huh. So what we do is that uh, b when we, we finish removing the, the waste, the waste we before we leave we we sprinkle lime on the floor then uh, again when they do the first day we sprinkle again lime mm. that way then you make the environment very hostile acarinity from acid to acarinity uh, you know the yes. the cuckoo droppings are very acidic so now you try to make it uh, uh, acarine. Acarine. that that ph is so uncomfortable for the waste for uh, for the not the, the flies, flies yes. the flies to lay eggs yeah. and the maggots to be Hiya. yes so god thanks for that mm. so there's actually a way you can kill the flies and the maggots just and, the, and the smell just reducing the multiplication yes. the, yeah their their production mm. yes even the smell yes how come it's not smelly 
it's, it's not smelly because you hear we also not, we are not going to we don't like keeping our our waste for a week like yes. the way people will say they will keep for a week mm. and then with us is every alternative alternative day we remove it oh yeah many people do okay it's expensive yeah but i say i'll i'll, I'll remind you again that um, this business we are not in it for a time we mm. are in it forever god willing yes so we are not looking for this margin of profit if we can get this what about at puerta they will get that and that and it will go into because in the future they will not need to put human beings to keep on cleaning they can put the scrapers mm. yeah they can put the rollers which you keep for the hedge type mm -hmm. yeah if we are able to go there we might reduce the, the labor but for now yes we use a lot of labor but still they are able to pay for it mm. for the chicken i'm not complaining yeah. they, are still able, they are still able to pay for the mm -hmm. labor yeah okay. i'm not looking that's what i'm saying i'm not looking for like um, i i need to be rich today no at a, even if i become rich today I would like to be rich today, but I want, but that would mean I get rich today, but for a very short time. Mm. But for me, I want to be rich to be to have that ritual, but to spread it for, for a, a long, long time. time. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, that was amazing. You have a question for me? Yes. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> but is there anything we've left behind? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> so, which which one are you going to keep? The cow, the broiler? Or the rears. I think for me, mm. I would, um, from the knowledge that I've gathered today, mm. I would keep the layers. You would keep the layers. No, I would keep. It's, it's confusing because <laughs> all of them have advantages mm -hmm. and uh, disadvantages. Yes, yes. But I would keep the layers mm -hmm. first because I know for me there would be a ready market for eggs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. I've also loved that you've also challenged people market yuko nairobi peke mm -hmm. come out of those places mm -hmm. and look for market even in rural mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. i would fear layers because of the vaccinations and the diseases mm -hmm. i feel like with broilers mm -hmm. you don't have much to lose mm -hmm. because they are 42 days mm -hmm. or 35 <laughs> days mm -hmm. even if they die you can start <laughs> again tomorrow but i feel with layers mm -hmm. if you've kept something for like five months mm -hmm. and then it dies on you at eight months I don't know, but mm. I've also loved the aspect of working smart. Mm. You don't have to start with them as Toshui. Mm. You can get that from someone else. Mm. Come here when they are eating the growers. Mm -hmm. That's the name. Yeah. Mom, don't play with me. <laughs> when I'm done with this show, <laughs> you know, you feed them the growers mm. and then start getting your eh, eggs. Yeah. Mm. So, in fact, what we do, mm. uh, that one I, I didn't mention is mm -hmm. when they come at 16 weeks, they are on layers, on, on, growers. on growers. When they come on growers, then we wait for them to start laying. Yes. I told you they start laying after about uh, three weeks, two three, to three weeks. Okay. Yes. When they start laying, they continue laying when they are still on growers. 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 You don't take them to mash, uh, to layers mash. Mm. They continue. Then when they hit 5% of production, Corrective one day, then after that you change the formula. Yes. And the formula goes now from tomorrow. I will give you seventy-five mm. of growers, twenty-five of rears. It's called winning. Yes. Off. Then the following day I will give you fifty of each. The f the f the third day I will give you now seventy-five of uh, rears much and twenty-five, 25 of, of growers. The fourth day you are all hundred percent on layers good that's the really good that's thing. it eh? yeah but i hope I, I think for me everything uh comes down to your market research mm. broilers can give you great profits if you know your market yes layers can do the same yes and also neatness and being clean eh? mm. is also something it's it's, yes. it's important because uh, no it's just like human beings once you get sick you spend so much money mm. on, on on medication treatment. and whatever mm. so if you can be able to sustain cleanliness in the rears actually all animals if you are able to maintain to avoid roses and keep your vaccination schedule the beauty of the of these birds by the time you get them you there is already a stub a pre whatever established mm. uh, vaccine schedule just like for babies yeah, i don't know they have one but for those who have children they know when you get a child you don't go saying i want you to vaccinate my baby for bcg yes. tomorrow not today or i want you i want you to give me my polio the day after tomorrow mm. because because who has already come with that as a shared a program Good. of how the vaccines will be given the same case happens mm. with chicken so we have a program for every road so it's a question of looking at 
if it's brightest, you calculate at this, this edge, this edge, this edge. Layers, this way, this way, this way. So you don't have issues with that. Issues. Uh, yeah. uh, how often do you experience egg breakage? And what, and what protects you from not experiencing that? Okay, let me start with, first of all, prevent egg breakage as much as possible. A method of correction, okay? And of course, like for us who are using the cages, the breakage is even lower because there's no, they, are, they are not going to peck them with their beaks. Mm. You see, they don't see, the, they, they, they can't reach them because it, you know the way they roll to car where it's corrected. Yes, yes. It's not like the deep reader where they are stepping on them and picking them with their, with their beaks. Mm. Then, so prevention is very important, even before we go to breakaging. Then the other thing, you remember I told you, when we start seeing the, the, the numbers, of breakages increasing because when every day the eggs are corrected we are we are supposed to be given the number of eggs corrected how many were broken so when you see the percentage of the broken eggs is increasing mm. in any given lot then you have two things to ask is it the people who are correct are they the people who are correcting the eggs how are they handling the, the eggs. eggs yeah the handling is very important if if it's not handling then is it the eggs which are having a weak shell meaning now you have to let go. Not let go. Not let go. Mm. Take action. Mm. And take action is where I told you, you might have to supplement calcium. Yes. So that you can have the egg shell oh. a little bit, a bit, a bit stronger. Yeah. And or is it the chicken who are pecking on it? Then find out why. But you find most of the, all our chicken, not most of, all our chicken are already depicted. Mm. So pecking on the egg is not very normal. But we also know they can also use the nail to but the beauty of it is for the for the for the cages the batteries when it is lays the egg slides out oh. so even stepping on it is not very common mm. so what do I do with them what we do with the broken eggs the broken eggs some are just cracked I can't we can't sell them there are some people who say you can use them for baking. Uh, we also don't use them for baking because we also believe that our customers who are, are taking our bakery products mm. should also get the, quali the good quality mm -hmm. of everything. Mm -hmm. So, but we give them to our staffs at a very low price. Okay. We tell them select what you think you can call it uh, for staff and for every egg, if, as far as it has a crack, they get it at five bob. Ah. Only for staffs. Okay. So they, they also go. Uh -huh. Last time nili toka uku bila mayai, leo stoki bila mayai You are living at four, they will have been corrected by four. Yes, and so. I saved my trees. <laughs> you know, I thought that's why you wanted to keep layers. I thought you were saying you uh, prefer putting layers because maybe you love eggs. Yeah, I love, I, I think a lot of people love eggs. Uh -huh. I think a lot of people love, love eggs. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like there is actually a huge market. Yeah. for eggs that's the beauty because unaona with the broilers before what were part of cold rooms when the market is not okay eggs unaweza weka kwa field ayako uende kwa yeah. barabara na ufungue yeah, na uweke price True. na uuze you get it True. yeah but thank you ma'am <coughs> yeah anything you want to add before we wind up i'm thinking as mm. for now mm -hmm. i'm okay yeah and uh, just to say thank you to the method family yes the uh, the co-director yes uh, the children who have joined us and those who have joined us by extension yeah we are very very happy oh, yes thank you very much for being our friends yes yeah. and thank you for the opportunity also from my end mom even people are asking on the last episode mm. how you uh, what you've done to maintain this good shape i have a good shape my beautiful Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm? So, able to pay tips to funge show. Avoid stress. Uh -huh. Avoid stress at all costs. Uh -huh. Yeah, avoid stress. Don't keep yourself. Uh, how do I put it? You know, there are people who take small things and draw them out. You know, there are people who are looking for a small problem and try to magnify it. Okay, and all I can say, what you cannot. What you cannot change, leave it. Leave it. You see, why wake up in the morning, complain on something, sijui tax, sijui nini, and you know you can't change it. So what you say, the day has come for today. What I can change, for me, when I wake up in the morning, what I can change mm. is what I can do on this farm. Yes. 
Okay. If there is anything I can do on this farm to make my life or somebody else's life better, that's what mm. for me cause. What is happening which I cannot change, I leave it to those who can change it. But if we can all pick our line and everybody sees where you fit, I think it will be good. Mm. Then when it, it also comes to to yourself, remember there is you, there is I, me, and myself. Mm -hmm. Give yourself your time. Not everybody has your time. Yeah, we. The only thing I tell people on this earth, we were given equally. Whether you are ugly or beautiful, tall or short, okay, black, white, green, yellow is only one. Time. Time. So what you are is is so much dependent on how do you use your time. How do you use your time? Do you use your time doing all the wrong things, 80%, and doing 20% of something good? Or do you do it vice versa? Mm. And uh, there is a, when I used to talk to people, I used to tell them, I believe God had a way of dividing these hours and he did it very, he is intelligent. Yeah, he's super intelligent because he gave us 24. So in 24, I always tell people, oh, if you divide them by three, you have eight hours of work. See, that's how you're employed. Yes. Eight, so we work for eight hours. Yes. Okay. Then if you say, if I was going to give everybody, if my body, it's real, real benefits. So I'll, I'll, wait, I'll work for eight hours for myself or for my employer, okay? I'll sleep for eight hours, those are 16. I'm left with eight hours, okay? The other eight hours is your, free, is your time, which you can use. You see, eight for employer, eight God gave you to, let, to dress your brain so that you can re-energize it and so that tomorrow you wake up fresh and be able to do one, two, three things. Eight, has, he has given you to do something of your choice. Now, these eight hours are the most dangerous, especially among you young people. I'm not only talking about the young old people, even us old ones. Those eight hours, how do you spend your eight hours which you have been given free and been told make a choice yes. of what you want to use them for? That's where the difference comes. And that's what makes the difference between rain and Jane or, or Jane or Mary somewhere else, how are the eight hours yes. of freedom used? If we can only be able to answer that question, we'll be okay. You'll be okay. And there is time for fun, but there is time for everything. For everything. For everything. And uh, learn to live in peace with everybody. It's possible. It looks hard, but, but it's, it's possible. possible. It's po learn to, to keep peace. Mm. To keep peace with as many people as you can. Yeah. You'll get angry, but always at the end of it, make peace with the people. Mm. Because uh, the things which get us to get into, into pressures, into depression, are not big things. It's those small, small, small things. When they pile together, they become one big thing, which puts you under a lot of pressure. Yes, yes. I hear you, thank yeah. you. That's my take home. That's my, my take home. Thank you. Yes, learn to be at peace with everyone. Yeah. It's the small things in different yeah. days and times that power together and become something mm -hmm. big. Yes. Yeah, but I hope my audience ha you always uh, motivate my audience. I love that you you just opened, you know, your doors to us and you can always come and yeah. you are not being a gatekeeper. You are giving us the knowledge. Yes. You are sharing your experience with us. So may I want to thank you for that. Most and may welcome. God continue blessing me. You guys, you've done amazing job. You, I'm like proud it. to know this is at our home. I'm proud to know this is locally owned and I'm proud to know the people behind this brand and how hard they work thank to you, make thank you it, very much. to give us mm. not just beautiful product. Najwa ni metumwa yogurt nikiwa hapa. One of the things I've been told is is how yogurt. You see now when I know people will can't wait just for that yogurt from a specific place it makes me happy. Thank you. So Mama Santi
and I know our people have been inspired and also you guys you can always check my vid it's it's everywhere it it's it's a brand we covered last time the contact details also will be there pinned on the comment section and I hope we've learned a lot of things I hope you will take action I hope you'll understand that you can always start from somewhere and I hope you've gotten motivated on today's episode of inspire global a huge shout out of course to our amazing partners at Optiven for always coming through for us. I know they are celebrating beautiful years of positive transformation and I keep saying now you know there are some people who will retire here Ushago and then there are people who are also looking for retirement homes Uko in places that are facing the Indian Ocean and then in try their properties in Vipingo. Ocean View Ridge is right there and don't forget to say that I sent you their contact details are on the screen and of course to say thank you to my incredible team who always compile this work, film it and make sure that it gets to reach you guys right on time. Tunapitianga mambo kabla tukae hapa tuonge leo tumetafuta shooting location these are things you don't get to see I, I, I think we'll be doing a bit of behind the scenes here and there and you we invite you into our world but as antenna sana for the support please subscribe it's free it will go a long way to making sure our work continues impacting the society one story at a time leave me your thoughts on the comment section i'm gonna see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m bye bye so trust the process One day your life is gonna change Keep on believing